have students and parents joining us and we really appreciate you being here and we think it's going to be i know it's going to be valuable information for you to know uh, we have a, a whole slew of events for you and, and sessions for you beyond this session to this morning session which um, we'll share with you in a little bit um, and so when you are joining us in the room if you are not a presenter please keep your camera switched off and your mic switched off we are recording this event you won't be on it but um, please make sure you keep uh, your camera turned off and your mic turned off uh, because we are recording this event. So to begin, I would like um, the reps, uh, the college admissions counselors who are here to introduce themselves, just let us know your name, where you're from, uh, what college you, you're from, and, uh, and then we'll go from there. So Miss Hill, do you want to start? <laughs> Sure. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lisa Hill, and I'm Senior Associate Director of Admissions at Goucher College, uh, right down the road from you. Thank you. All right. Who wants to go next? I can go next. My name is Deneen House, and I am a college recruiter from Bowie State University, the oldest HBCU in the state of Maryland. We're located in Bowie, Maryland. And my territories are Baltimore City, Baltimore County, and Delaware, Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. My name is ID Longa. I'm a freshman admissions counselor at Towson University. I'm sure you have no clue where that is. Um, I recruit in Baltimore County Public Schools. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Um, and for the students and parents just joining us, uh, just so you know that we are recording this particular session of the event. Um, so please keep your microphones and cameras switched off. Um, we go, if you do have a question that you would like the reps, the college admissions counselors to answer, please post that in the chat box as we go along and either they will respond to you or We'll, you know, I'll read it out so that we can discuss your question uh, with the panel. Okay. And Ms. Wright, do you want to talk about the, the events today? Yes. Good morning, everyone. For those of you who don't know, I am Mrs. Wright. I am Towson's College and Career Counselor. We are very excited to have our college reps here with us and for you to learn some information about the college process today. So I'm actually going to put in the chat the schedule of events and all of our sessions. As you can see, college application process panel, you are already here and good to go. We're going to have a college essay session, a session on Naviance and the Common App, and finally, a financial aid and scholarship session. All of those sessions are going to be taking place in this Google Meets room. So you can either log in and out as you need to, or you can just stay logged in until 2 p.m. when the se sessions wrap up. Um, we will also be having, after this session, breakout rooms for each individual college. So for example, if you want to talk to Ms. Hill about Goucher, she's going to have her own breakout room, and I will put those links in the chat towards the end of the session. So if you want to talk to an admissions counselor one-on-one, -on -one, that is where you should go after the session. Thank you. And you may be thinking, students, you may be thinking, you know, um, I want to apply to a college that is not represented today. All information is useful. So regardless of whether you're applying to a different college or you're still not sure, every, every time you can uh, join a session like this, it's always useful. So I, I encourage you to stay and listen to what the reps have to, to say and you'll you'll learn you'll learn today uh, more about the college admissions process so to get started what i'd like to do is just each each of the reps just talk a little bit about their college um, anything in particular that we should know about and also let us know about do you use the common app do you use your own app how just a brief overview and then for students and parents, what I'd like you to do is start 
typing in your questions that you have in the chat box, and then we'll take it from there. All right, so Miss Hill, do you wanna, do you wanna start us off and talk a little bit about Goucher? Sure, thank you, Simon. So uh, again, I represent Goucher College. We are a four-year residential liberal arts college. We are located here in Towson, um, right past the mall, to give you, if you're not quite sure, right past the mall. Um, we are a 287-acre campus. Um, so over 90% of our students live do live on campus all four years. That includes students from Maryland, which represent about 40% of our students. Um, something unique about Goucher is that 100% of our students do study abroad. So we do incorporate international experiences into all students uh, four-year programs. Um, so if you are an athlete, if you are someone in a fine and performing arts program, if you are a pre-med student, you will be, um, uh, you will add a international experience, a study abroad experience, whether it's a semester or uh, three weeks into your four-year plan. Our semester programs are included in your tuition, so there is an additional charge to study abroad. Um, the overall atmosphere on campus, um, it's kind of, it's a community. Uh, we value um, students, who they are, their perspective. Um, our students don't look alike, they don't act alike, they don't think alike, and that's exactly what we want. We are a campus of about 1,100 students, so that means we have small classes. Our average class size um, is 17, and we have a 10 to 1 student-faculty ratio. So this is a place where um, you will know your professors. Um, you will have discussion-based classes. Um, we offer over 40 majors, a number of minors, uh, standalone minors, and we also offer four plus one programs with Johns Hopkins and Loyola in the business program. Um, in regards to our application process, um, I am your admissions counselor, so if there are seniors uh, here and if you decide to apply, it is me who will evaluate your application. Uh, we are on the Common App and um, we are a test optional, which means that if you feel your standardized test scores uh, represent who you are and uh, your ability, then you're welcome to submit them. However, if you don't uh, like your scores, you don't have to send them in. And we have been test optional since 2006. Um, when students apply for admission, you are automatically considered for our merit scholarships. And so our program, um, our evaluation program um, can review students without test scores. So you do not need to have test scores to be considered for our merit scholarships. And they range from 12000 to $35,000 per year for four years. Um, the application process is fairly simple. We just want to make sure that you um, have the foundation to find success in college. Um, so we, other than what's commonly asked in the Common App, your essay, your transcript, and a recommendation letter, we don't ask for additional information. So I am going to stop now um, because I would like my colleagues to share um, uh, their wonderful information about their colleges. And if you have any questions about the college process or anything, feel free to place them in the chat. Thank you. All right. Um, who wants to go next? Just jump in. I can go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, again, my name is Deneen House, and I am a college recruiter at Bowie State University. I'm also a two-time alumni of Bowie State, so it's not just a job for me. It is dear to my heart as well. Um, so at um, Bowie State University, we are located in Bowie, Maryland. We're about 45 minutes from Baltimore. Um, one unique fact about us is we have the MARC train that stops directly on our campus. So for example, I do live in Baltimore County and I commute via the MARC train. Um, it takes about, I mean, it is about six stops from Baltimore and the cost is, um, I believe like $6. But if you're not interested in living on campus, um, you can be a commuter student at Blue State University. We are the first HBCU in the state of Maryland. We were established in 1865 and we actually started out in Baltimore City and later moved to our current location, which is in Bowie, Maryland. We have a little over 6,200 students. 
Um, we have over 50 clubs and organizations, so um, very active campus. We create a lot of leaders on our campus. We have a very involved student government association where we create leaders, um, future leaders. Um, we have 23 majors. Um, our top five majors, nursing being number one. Um, the other five are business, education, communications, and criminal justice. But we do have other majors, animation and motion graphics, fashion design, um, cybersecurity. So we do have an array of um, different majors. Um, our application is online. We are not a part of the Common App. However, this year, our application fee is being waived. So um, it was $40, but this year there will be zero dollars to apply at Bowie State University. And again, our applications are only online. Um, and you can visit our website, which is BowieState.edu. Um, we do have um, Division II sports. Um, our coaches do handle their own recruitment and scholarships. So if you are interested in playing a sport, you would have to contact them directly. For the guys, we have football, basketball, indoor and outdoor track and field, and cross country. For the ladies, we have um, basketball, cross country, indoor and outdoor track and field, tennis, volleyball. Um, um, I'm missing two. Volleyball, softball, and um, bowling. Those are the two. Um, so again, if you are interested in a sport, you can reach out to the coaches and their information is on our website. Um, we are, for admittance to Bowie State, you have to have at least a 2.3 GPA. However, we are test optional for this year. And if you have a 2.5 or higher, um, you just need to apply, submit your transcript, letters of recommendation. Um, also, if you have between a 2.3 and a 2.49, um, if you do not have test scores, you would have to fill out another, it's another step, which is our appeal application. But if you have two five or higher, it's nothing else you need to do, but just do the application and submit your documents. Um, I think that is all for now. If we have any other questions, you can put them in the chat or you can ask me in the breakout room. But that is the um, basic information about the State University. Thank you. Um, Ms. Long? Hello, everyone. Again, my name is Idi Longa. I am freshman admissions counselor here at Towson University. Um, you know, all know Towson University is not too far from Towson High. We're just right around the corner, and I've already planned my visit, so hopefully I'll be able to see you all um, towards the end of September. Towson University is the fastest growing university in the state of Maryland, and we also produced the most teachers um, out of any university in the state. We did originally begin as a teaching uh, university, so that's always a fun fact I like to throw out there. I was a Towson University student. I'm actually a recent graduate, and I love the school so much that I decided to come back and work for my university. We have over 60 majors here at Towson University, as well as accelerated programs where you can obtain a master's degree and a bachelor's degree within five years, which I think is an excellent program. We are a division one school, which is allows you to play football, softball, lacrosse, tennis, swimming, anything you want, we got it. We also have over 250 uh, clubs and organizations. So uh, while I was at Towson, I participated in groups such as improv. I'm not good at improv. I learned that very quickly. Um, we also have a Quidditch club. We have hair braiding clubs, anything that you may be interested in. And as well, you might not have a, we might not have a club for you, but you can get some friends together and get an advisor and you can start your own club here at Towson. We are constantly growing. We just opened our brand new science complex. It was a $180 million project and we're happy to welcome students back onto campus this fall into our new building. We are expanding our union as well. We're bringing in a Dunkin' Donuts, which I know a lot of people are really excited about as well as the full uh, service Chick-fil-A. Um, uh, we are also, uh, one thing I love to throw out is that 88% of our students within six months of graduation um, 
either find full-time employment or are um, entered into a uh, higher education as in a grad program or anything of that sort. Um, we like to also want to mention that we have the top 10% program. So if you know you fall within the top 10% within your class, you may be eligible for a fee waiver. So you do not have to pay our $45 application fee. We are hoping today is that we are going to um, launch on the Common App. Um, so I would say hold off until the end of the day, and then you may be able to see us on the Common App. But yes, we are a Common Application at Common App uh, School. We are also test optional, so we do not require your SAT or ACT scores. We do say that if you fall within the middle 50% range, um, which is around 980 to about 1160 for SAT and between 18 to 25, I believe, for ACT, we say you can feel comfortable in, in sending, you, um, sending your scores. But let's say you fall a little bit under that, that's fine. Go ahead and apply test optional. Our average GPA is about a 3.7, um, but that's not to discourage anybody from applying, we take more of a holistic approach when we're looking at applications. You want to see who you are as a student, um, see what you're involved in, um, see what type of courses you took. Everything comes into account when we're looking um, at applications. And I will be your admissions counselor for Baltimore County, so feel free to send me an email or give me a call. All of my information is on our website, and I'll make sure to drop it in the chat later. Thank you. Thank you. So um, we're monitoring the chat box with quest for questions. So please post your questions in the chat box that you want to have answered by our panel. So I'm going to get started with a question. Can you talk to uh, the to us about? Um, I know you, some of you, you know, you mentioned testing in the uh, in your introductions, but could you talk to us about the test optional, and if I don't send my test in, are you going to look at other things more heavily? If I do send my test in and it's not exactly what I want, will that go against my application? Could you talk a little bit about that, how you view testing? Um, so who wants to go? Anyone can just jump in if you want to go first. I can go. So at Bowie, um, as I stated earlier, our admission requirements are 2.5 or higher GPA um, and 850 or higher on the SAT or composite of 16 or higher on the ACT. And we are test optional. So if you do not um, have test scores um, when you apply to the university, if you meet the criteria um, as far as your GPA, um, we will be able to offer merit scholarships based on just your GPA. Now, um, as I stated earlier, if you have between the 2.3 GPA and a 2.49 and you have test scores, um, then you can um, not have to do the extra step for having the lower GPA. But if you have at least the 850 or higher GPA, I'm, I'm sorry, test scores, you can submit them if you like to. But if you don't, you don't have to, but you still will be considered for merit scholarships. And I would say in general about um, test scores, because of the pandemic, and you probably heard in the news, a lot of colleges, two thirds of the colleges in the country now are test optional, which is great. However, each college is different. So the one piece of advice I think we all can give you is that you really need to check with the colleges that you're interested in their test optional policies. Some colleges will say, okay, you can, um, you don't have to submit your scores, but you may have to submit something else. Um, other colleges, it doesn't matter. You can just, you don't have to worry about it. You're not going to be penalized in any way. So the one piece of advice of test optional is to make sure you check with each college to make sure that you're following their um, their policy because the last thing you want when you're getting all your application materials in that you found out that you didn't you forgot to submit something because you you didn't ask the question. Now at Goucher, as I mentioned, we've been test optional since 2006. So. And in the end, about two thirds of our students will submit their scores, but it isn't, if it's not part of the admissions process, 
it's okay. We still evaluate your application. We look at your GPA. Our average GPA is about a 3.2, unweighted on a 4.0 scale. Um, we look at your activities, leadership positions, all of those in terms of, um, of awarding merit scholarships. Um, but also another piece to remember, you are not your test scores. You have worked extremely hard throughout high school to prepare yourself for college. Do not let one aspect of the college admissions process to determine who you are and where you want to go to college. Um, colleges, and we've all mentioned this, we look at the entire application. That's what holistic means in terms of evaluating you for admission. So if you feel you're not a strong test taker or you just you don't like your scores, don't feel that that is going to determine where you're going to go in college. You are much more than a standardized test score. So, Heidi? That was perfectly said. Um, do not let your test scores define you. They don't have to. Graduating from high school is an accomplishment. Not, it's a very, it's something that we take for granted, but graduating from high school is an accomplishment. And the fact that you're choosing higher education is a big deal. And we see that promise in you. I do say for Towson University, like I said, if you're between that middle 50% range, 980 to about 1160 for SAT um, and ACT 18 to 25, send us your scores. But if your scores fall under that, it's perfectly fine to apply test optional. It will not hurt you in terms of consideration for admissions, as well as it won't hurt you for consideration for merit-based scholarships. If you don't want to send it to us, that's fine. And sometimes it may be better because you know what? It may be more beneficial to you not to send us your scores. Don't feel like because you didn't send us your SAT or ACT, now we're not even going to consider you for scholarships. We will. We just want to make sure that we get to see you as an individual, not necessarily always the numbers, because sometimes you may feel like your numbers don't represent you completely, and that's fine. That's where we're going to look at recommendations. We're going to look at extracurriculars. We're going to look at the type of course load that you were taking. Were you taking AP courses? Were you taking honors courses? We take all of that into consideration, and remember, we're, in the, we're people too too. We went to school and we understand what it's like. So we're looking at you as people as well. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. And I think people are starting to wake up and we have a lot of questions that have rolled into the chat. So I'm going to start going through them. Um, first one, if a student has a lower GPA, do you require them to take placement exams or anything like that? At Bowie State, yes, you will have to take a placement test um, after you've been admitted, yes. Same goes for Towson. You will be required to take a math and reading placement test just so we know where to place you for English and math courses once you've been admitted. Um, at Goucher, it's, all students have to take um, a placement test, but it's not um, based on your GPA. All admitted, all enrolled students will have to take um, the placement test test similar to Towson to see where we place you in math, um, foreign language, and in our writing courses. Perfect, thank you. And where can you find timelines and deadlines for applications if you don't know where to look yet? On our admissions web pages. So, um, and we, that's where you find out if we're early decision, which is binding, early action, regular decision. Um, so yes, visit the um, your college's um, admissions web pages to find the deadlines and all the information associated with what needs to be submitted with the application. Same for Bowie on our website on the admissions page. Perfect, thank you. What I want everyone to hear from that is that the admissions website of the college you're interested in is your new best friend. It has all of the information you could ever want, so make sure that you are constantly checking and double checking that, okay? Um, let's see, next we have, do you have to declare a major when you apply to your school? 
No, we do not. Towson University is major blind. So we do not consider uh, what major you're coming. You can come in undecided. You can come in with, uh, say you wanna do biology because the thing is we know students are gonna change their minds most of the time. You might apply and say you wanna be a bio major and then you get here two weeks and you're like, this is not for me. And we understand that. So you can apply with any major undecided. We do not take that in consideration in the admissions process. The same for Bowie State. Um, <clears throat> as a new student, you're going to be taking um, general education courses, and they're the same for all majors, so not really a, a huge issue. Same for Goucher. Um, you can come in undecided, and you have until the second semester of your sophomore year to declare your major or majors. Perfect. Thank you. And let's say a student thinks they want to do uh, biology as a major when they apply, but then first semester or freshman year, they decide that they want to be an English major. Um, can they actually switch at that point if they listed biology in their application? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Simple answer. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Um, okay. Next question, do merit scholarships and financial aid need to be applied for separately with each school um, in addition to the FAFSA? So yes, at Bowie State, um, in order to receive a merit scholarship, you must have completed the FAFSA application. Um, and the merit scholarship comes from the Office of Admissions and then there are other, other scholarships available through our Office of Financial Aid, so yeah. Yes, yeah, similar to Bowie, uh, you do have to complete the FAFSA, as, but as soon if you, as long as you apply by our December 1st deadline, which is our priority deadline, you will automatically be considered for merit-based scholarships. Um, but let's say you apply December 3rd, we can no longer consider you. So we always wanna shout out December 1st, December 1st, if you wanna be considered for merit-based scholarships. Thank you, Bowie. And uh, similar, oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, similar, um, when you apply for admission, you're automatically considered for merit scholarships. Um, but if you want to be considered for financial aid, um, you will need to submit the FAFSA. Um, it opens, the FAFSA opens on October 1st. So your family can start uh, uh, filling out the document. I do want to let you know that because you are a Maryland resident, um, as long as you list one Maryland college on your FAFSA, you will be considered for state funding. Very fortunate to be a Maryland resident because Maryland has a lot of funding available for students to use at any other colleges and universities as well as community colleges. You do not want to leave this money on a table. Um, they have one scholarship called the Guaranteed Access Grant that's based on income. If you meet the GPA and the income guidelines, you could be awarded, this year was $19,400. And that is money that you do not have to repay. It goes to with you in any, co any college in Maryland that you go to. And some of those colleges will actually um, uh, match that amount. Um, so again, if you're going to uh, want to be considered for state funding, you need to put down at least one Maryland college on your uh, FAFSA so you can be considered for that. Perfect. Thank you. Um, if students apply test optional, will you take their GPA into account still? And what are the other pieces of the application that you're going to be looking at for test optional students? I can go ahead and jump in first. So for our application, we are going to consider your GPA, whether you apply test optional or if you apply with tests. We are looking at your transcripts, basically from your ninth to 11th year. You have not yet done your 12th year, so we can't look at that, but that does not mean you're supposed to start slacking your 12th grade year because we will get that final transcript. Um, but we are mostly basing our decision off in terms of GPA from your ninth to 11th grade year. We're also gonna hack, ask you for an essay 
database since we're on the Common App. There's, a, I believe, seven different prompts. Um, and so I believe that's also already listed on their website. You can go ahead and check out what they are. And then we don't necessarily require a letter of recommendation, but they can't hurt you. Um, they can only make you sound better. Um, we also have optional uh, extracurricular resume. So if you're involved in school, you're in your school's SGA, student council, you play sports, um, you're on the debate team, show us. We want to know that you're a diverse and well-rounded student. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I'm leaving off. Transcripts. Uh, essay, I believe that's it. Um, we're taking all of that into consideration, but yes, we do have to look at your GPA. Okay. Anything else you want to add? At Bowie is similar. We um, do look at the, the GPA on the transcript, um, making sure you had four mathematics um, classes throughout your 12 year, I mean, your four years. And um, we do look at the GPA from the end of the 11th grade. And again, no slacking 12th grade, because again, we do look at the, we do receive um, the final high school transcript from the college. And if your GPA has been reduced by drastically, um, you can be, your emissions can be revoked. Perfect. Yes, the transcript is the most important piece of information that you're going to submit to us. Uh, but understand, um, and, and Towson said this, we're people too, we've been in your shoes, we understand uh, what high school is like um, and it's challenging. Decisions that you made in ninth grade don't necessarily reflect who you are right now. So we look for those upward trends. We look for how you are preparing yourself for college. That's why, as um, Ivy said, um, don't slack off your senior year because we will see that at some point and that is preparing you for uh, college. Um, also want to, um, to mention, we know what the last 18 months have been like. And so we know transcripts can look different. Um, there could be P's on your transcript, there could be grades. Um, because of, of virtual learning, um, you may not have done as well as you wanted to uh, in a particular class or something like that. We take that all into consideration. And the, actually the Common App allows you, if you want to um, talk about how COVID, how the pandemic has affected you, you can actually indicate that, list that in um, on the common application um, for as additional information. You don't have to, but if you want to, you can. Thank you. And I do want to mention that we do have a later session about the common app where I will walk you through creating an account adding schools, what you will need to fill it out on there. So hold off on your Common App questions. I know that's a big one. Um, rolling back a little bit, can you talk about deadlines? I know you've all kind of mentioned what your deadline is, but I think students um, are worried that since your applications are open, they have to submit them right now. Um, so can you just talk a little bit about your deadlines and how that works? We offer two deadlines, early action, which is non-binding, which means um, if you apply by December 1st, um, if once your application becomes complete, within two weeks, we will evaluate your application and let you know of your admissions decision, as well as your merit scholarship. And you have until May 1 to let us know if you um, are interested in enrolling or you can apply by um, January 15th, which is our regular decision. And similar to early action, once it's complete, we'll notify you within two weeks and you have until May 1 to let us know of your admissions decision. So fairly, fairly simple deadlines. Towson University has similar deadlines. December 1st is our early action. I love to say you apply early, you hear back early. Um, early action is not binding. Make sure you know the difference between early action and early decision. Um, I have a colleague that likes to say early decision is kind of like Tinder. It's like you swiped right and it's like you're saying like, I'm going here and like, that's it, that's final. Um, so early action is a little more loose. It's just saying, if you apply early, you hear back early. That also means you'll be 
considered for merit-based scholarships if you apply by December 1, and that is also our honors college deadline. So if you're interested in applying to the honors college, you have to get your application in by December 1st. And it's and there's a little extra part of our application process if you would like to be admitted to the honors college. Um, if you get into Towson University, it doesn't necessarily mean you were admitted to the honors college as well. Um, that's a separate application process. And then January, January 15th is our regular decision deadline. And then the university May 1st for uh, to accept um, and enroll. And similar to Towson, um, Bowie State University early action is December the 1st. Um, and then we do um, de decisions by May the 1st. Um, but again, the merit scholarships will run out. So you wanna make sure you are applying as early as possible. Um, you wanna make sure um, if, if Bowie is your top choice, you wanna commit as early as possible as well, because um, as I said earlier, the, um, if, if you don't make a decision by January the 15th, um, the, the money will roll over to another pool. Um, so um, just know that the earlier you decide, the earlier you apply, the earlier you decide, the more money that you will. Thank you. And switching gears a little bit, letters of recommendation. How many letters of recommendation, if any, are required for your applications? And who should write letters of recommendation, especially considering that most of last year we were virtual um, and students didn't have a chance to maybe get to know their junior year teachers as well as they would have in the past? So at Bowie, recommendation letters are optional if you have a 2.5 or higher. If you fall between the 2.3 and the 2.49, then you are required to have two letters of recommendation and they could be written by counselors, um, coaches, teachers. Um, I think that's it. Teachers, coaches, counselors, yes. Yeah. But only if your GPA falls between the 2.3 and the 2.49 are you required ahead that is a recommendation go ahead okay um at towson we do not require you send in recommendation letters um but if you do two is the max um it can be a teacher it can be uh your priest your it can be your coach um it can be a past employer we just want somebody who knows you well, that's not a family member, um, that can speak to your work ethic and who you are as a person. And we do ask for a recommendation letter from an academic, uh, one of your teachers. However, we understand if it's taken time to get that recommendation letter in or it's just difficult, just let us know and we'll waive it. Um, we do like, that, that third party um, uh, reference. We do like to hear how you're doing in the classroom or in a different setting, um, but we do understand what's going on this year and it may be difficult, but in general, we require one recommendation letter. Thank you. And how much does the essay factor into the admissions process? And is that at all different if students are applying with test scores versus without test scores? The, the essay for us, it's a part of the application. So um, an essay will not um, prevent you from being admitted uh, to Goucher. Um, you know, we may, I mean, we're hoping that you will take the time to um, proofread your essay. We love punctuation. Please use punctuation. Periods and commas are wonderful paragraphs too. Um, so take the time to, to write a thoughtful essay because it's your voice. That is the one piece of information that lets us know who you are, what you're interested in, what it is that you are hoping, you know, to do when you're in college. So um, we're not looking for, you know, the next great novelist. We're just looking to hear, to read, 
it was to hear your voice. Um, so select a topic that's comfortable for you. You can write about winning um, the game with the winning basketball. You can talk about your favorite pet. You can talk about how, you know, what it, how your life has changed during COVID, whatever it is that's important to you. Um, that That's what you write about. Um, at Goucher, it's just a part, as I said, it's just a part of the application. So we don't, um, we don't ask for anything else or, or things like that. Um, for Bowie, the essay is optional and it's only required, again, if you have that GPA between 2.3 and 2.49. Um, otherwise, it's optional. And similar to Goucher, we do require an essay. Um, like we mentioned before, most of the time we're just looking at numbers and letters and we really want to get to know who you are as a student. And this is the chance for you to show us your voice so you can pop in your application. We read hundreds and hundreds of applications and this is your time to help you stand out. Um, you can really write about anything. The prompts allow enough room for you to really be creative. Um, we've read applications applications about people writing about their favorite artists. They write an application about Drake. Um, <laughs> it's really just about knowing, uh, allowing us to know who you are so we can get a better view of you as a student. And just a quick reminder, right after this session, actually at 11 a.m. in this same Google Meets room, we are going to be having a session on the college essay. So if you would like to join that, please do so, and I think you'll find it helpful. Also remember in your English classes, your teachers are also going to give you support to, oh, can you guys hear me still? No, I guess not. I can hear you. Okay. I think I'm good. <laughs> Sorry, my computer just said that I lost connection. Um, you'll receive help in your English classes and counselors are also available to help you throughout the school year. So you're not just going to be thrown into the deep end on your own. Um, to close this out, because we've only got a couple more minutes left in this session, um, can you talk about if students need a car or a driver's license to get around on your campus? I can go first. Um, Ed Bowie. If you are a first time freshman, you are not allowed to have a car on campus if you are living on campus. If you're commuting, you can. Um, we do have other modes of transportation. Um, for example, we have the shuttle, we have um, Metro bus, um, and we have the Mark train. If you are interning in Washington DC or need to get home to Baltimore, um, you can take the MARC train, um, but if you need to get to like a Walmart or the mall, we have different um, shuttles and modes of transportation that can get you to get what you need. But as a freshman, you cannot um, have a, a car if you're living on campus. Similar to Bowie, uh, we re freshmen are not allowed to have cars on campus. If you're a commuter student, you do you can drive your car onto campus, but freshmen are not allowed to have cars on campus. But Towson is located in a great area. We are about a 15 minute walking distance from uptown Towson, where you can go to the movie theater, the mall, all the restaurants. Um, and then we're also fairly close to Baltimore. So we have the Baltimore College Town Shuttle, um, which travels around the area. You can bounce over to Goucher if you would like to from Towson with the Baltimore College Town Shuttle. And then we also have have our on-campus shuttles. We have the Tiger in Town, which will take you into Uptown Towson. It runs until, I believe, two o'clock in the morning. Um, and then we have ones that run around campus consistently, the Black and the Gold Route. Um, so you, even if you don't have a car, I didn't have a car when I was here at Towson and I was able to make it around just fine to the grocery store and everything with the use of our shuttles. And at Goucher, you can have a car. Uh, first year students uh, can have a car on campus. Um, you don't need a car to get around. Uh, uh, our campus itself is very easy to walk, um, but you are allowed, um, I think it's $75 a year to park on campus. Um, but like Towson, there are many shuttles. Uh, it's easy to walk to restaurants, to the mall, to everything. And I think there's a new public bus uh, called the Loop that's 
coming to Towson. So students can use that to get around Towson too. So Perfect. Thank you. And last but not least, one minute. So we'll make this quick. Um, although this could arguably be the most important thing. Um, do you offer supports for students with IEPs or 504s? And can you just give a real quick general overview of the various supports you offer to students who come to your campus? Yes, we do accommodate students through our Office of Accessibility Services. Each student is assigned um, a success team that includes a pre-major advisor, um, a launch network member, a member of the launch network. Um, it's a, a sort of people that will sit, um, assist students through the process, help them select classes, register. But if you need um, additional assistance, our Office of Accessibility Services uh, will work with the students. And similar to Voucher at Bowie State, we do have the Office of Disability Services that will assign a team based on your situation um, to assist you throughout your stay here at um, Bowie State. We also have um, tutoring available. Um, it's it's a, um, a staff for first time freshmen, um, just so that they can have all of the things because they're new to campus, you know, if they're lost, they have ambassadors that are out on campus, especially the first week of classes to assist students with um, what building they should be going to. And just to give offer them assistance so they don't feel as lost um, as they could. And um, we have um, career services um, that can assist you with interns and things like that as well. And similar to Goucher and Bowie, we actually met with our Accessibility and Disability Services team yesterday, which is great. Um, over about 10% of our population, so about 2,200 students at Towson, utilize our Accessibility and Disability Student Services. Um, we offer, uh, you each get, you, these students assigned a specialist, so you don't feel like you're bouncing around the person to person during your time at Towson University. You get one specialist. We have, we offer all types of accommodations and offer accommodations for all students. Um, this is your time to advocate for yourself, and we have all of those services for you. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right, so now this session is wrapping up, and we are going to be moving our admissions counselors into their own specific breakout rooms. If you still have specific questions for them, I'm going to paste all of the Google Meets codes that you need to access. Um, and can go and hop on over to those specific rooms. Our next session in this room is going to be the college essay, and that is going to start at 11 a.m. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Appreciate it.